Um, and thank you for joining us today. Um, we, uh, on behalf of the Learning Informatics Lab at the College of Education and Human Development, I would like to extend a warm welcome to you all uh, and joining us for our first webinar in the fall of 2021. Um, the lab was established in 2019 as an interdisciplinary and intellectual space where we research, design, and mobilize information technology and data analytics in an effort to improve learning across the lifespan. Um, we aspire to build relationships with several units and faculty across the university and uh, nationally and internationally. Um, and you will find in the chat um, the lab website and our contact information. Uh, so please reach out if you would like to get involved or more information. Um, and then I will pass it on to Bodong to introduce today's speaker. Thank you. Thank you, Pani. Good morning, uh, everyone, and good evening, uh, Dr. Chai. It's my pleasure to introduce our uh, respected speaker today, um, Professor Ch uh, Ching Chong Chai, Chai Jing Chong, um, who is the currently a chair professor and dean for School of Learning Informatics from the National Taiwan Normal University in Taipei. And he's also directing an institute uh, for research excellence in the learning sciences also at the National Taiwan Normal University. Um, he uh, got his master's degree from Harvard and a doctorate degree from Teachers College, Columbia University. I, I learned, I think, you got your doctorate degree within three years, which is uh, so amazing and impressive. And um, he has been a leader in, in multiple fields, um, including education technology, the learning sciences, science education, and I won't count those fields he's really engaged with and leading uh, for, for a long time. He's a co-editor of the Computers and Education, the journal, which is very well known and well established uh, in the field of education technology. He's also uh, serving as the editor of International Journal of Science Education as well. Um, and this research interest deals largely with constructivism, epistemic beliefs, various types of technology enhanced environments. And he has published so many um, great articles. Uh, if, if you can count on his website, 350 uh, papers uh, within the past 20 years. I, I want to tell a fun fact about uh, Dr. Chai, uh, which is, when I was uh, submitting to computer ed ed education a few years ago, he rejected me um, for some really good reasons. <laughs> and, and today I'm, I'm paying it back. Like, like Dr. Chai said, um, I give him two options, which is to stay up night uh, late <laughs> to give us a talk or to rise early in the, in the morning at 5 a.m. to give us a talk. Uh, but it's all fun memories. I'm, I'm so looking forward to the talk from uh, Dr. Chai. And, and Dr. Chai can take over from here. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Bodong. But, but I cannot remember, I reject your paper, really? So you, you, you reject a lot of people. So I, I was just one of yeah. them. So but, don't but worry I about think, it. <laughs> oh, so, uh, uh, could you forward the rejection later to me as a, a kind of memory, yeah, you know? Yeah. Oh, okay. I will, I, I will try to search your paper again, you know, in my database. Okay, yeah. but. Uh, thanks for uh, Bodong's uh, introduction, and uh, he said a lot of uh, things about me, but I'm thinking that's, that's not about me, you, you know, I, I, is that, that me? Yeah, I don't know, yeah. But uh, I'm right now uh, working in uh, National Taiwan Normal University, and uh, actually, when I got invitation, uh, how, how can I put it? How can I? Uh, I cannot go to the next page. Why? Do you want okay. to try? Yeah. Stop again. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, we. How about we just stop uh, at this page and finish the talk? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I'm think yeah because I actually I got your formal invitation. Then I know oh that's uh, the, the the invitation is sent by uh, learning informatics lab. So uh, I said, oh, that's maybe the reason I got invited for this seminar. Because right now I'm the dean for School of Learning Informatics in National Taiwan Normal University. So I think that's maybe one of the reasons. 
And uh, also, I'm uh, also the director for Institute for Research in uh, Excellence in Learning Sciences. So we have some researchers working in uh, learning informatics. And then I'm also the head of a program of learning sciences. And I'm also the chair of uh, Graduate Institute for Information and Computer Education. And I am also the chair for Graduate Institute of Library and Information Studies. I list all of the titles. I, I want to say that uh, Nature Taiwan Normal University abused me, you know, that's the re that's the, that's the evidence. Yeah, okay. So 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 but but actually I know not I I I cannot say I I know nothing about learning sciences. I, I know nothing about learning information, but I just have some linkage with that. But actually, I'm not really the expert in learning sciences or learning informatics. So I and also I right now I have two uh uh two editor job. Uh one is in computer education, and actually I serve the, the co-editor for 12 years already. And then uh, in, I think in recent one and two years, we try to discuss how to more efficiently to handle all of the submissions. So next year I will become, because we, right now we are, have a new position for editor-in-chief. So next year I will become the editor-in-chief because I'm the most senior one. So, so I, I suddenly become the, the, the editor-in-chief for computer education for next year. But, for the last 10 years, we did, did not have that kind of position. But right now we want to have one chief editor and then we can handle, uh, the chief editor can handle all of the submission first and they try to assign to the core editor. That's the new infrastructure for the journal. And then I'm also, uh, I, my background, another background is about science education. So right now I'm also the editor for International Journal of Science Education. Actually, I'm, uh, uh, I, I would like to talk about my background. Actually, I'm a science teacher in a high school before in Taiwan, before my, uh, I went to uh, United States for my master's degree uh, and also my data degree. So actually my data status is about science education, not, nothing about technology. But for after my uh, data degree study and I back to Taiwan, my first job uh, is in one, uh, called National Chao Tong University. That's quite famous in computer science. So I know some people in computer science and they want to do something about educational technology. So that's the reason I go to, I jump to uh, the field of educational technology. And that's uh, more than 20, that's uh, um, 25 years ago. So that's uh, the, the, the time, that's uh, the, the popularity of internet. And that's, uh, we, we have a very high expectation about online learning or internet assisted learning. So I, I think I'm a very good timing to join the educational technology because the, 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 all the technology become popular and more ready for everyone. So, so, actually, so, so I want to say that um, my background actually is not, nothing about technology and nothing about computer science, nothing about informatics. So I would say that, please do not have a high expectation about my talk. That's the first thing I want to say. And right now that's already midnight, you know? So I will say something crazy or maybe I fall asleep after some slides, okay? And uh, also uh, my talk does not have direct link with learning informatics. So, so that's my, I, I, I want to say something before my talk. But I want to share some of my study, a series of my study. I think that's also the findings also can help you think something about learning informatics or maybe inform you something, some future research about learning informatics or about learning sciences. That's my intention about that. So for my talk, I want to address a very fundamental issue. That is how students conceptualize learning. That's quite, what does, what does they mean about learning? What's the meaning of learning to them, to the, to the students? And how do students think about learning or what is learning? That's the, so that's a kind of very philosophy questions. And also, Bo Dong said something about my, one of my major interests is about students or teachers belief, uh, systemic belief 
about science or about everything. So that's also some fundamental belief about the nature of learning or the, the nature of knowledge. So, so I'm quite interested in that kind of topic. So I want to share uh, one, uh, one of my early studies. That's about a drawing uh, analysis. And uh, we are uh, one, uh, we asked a group of uh, elementary school students, they to, uh, that's drawing. Uh, I misspell one, one thing, that's one G here, okay. And uh, then we asked some uh, elementary school students to draw their ideas about learning in their drawing because they are elementary school students. And that's quite difficult to uh, get their idea through questionnaire. And if we conduct an interview, that's also quite time consuming. So we ask the students to draw their idea. And actually, we extend these studies from elementary school to high school students. So here I will share some of their drawing. And so, so the sample here is not only from the elementary school, uh, also from later for, for, for uh, from some data studies uh, to high school students. But I will just show some, some sample. Here is uh, from one high school student. And the, can you recognize what he want to draw? That's a, a child, that's the students. I think that's the learner and that's his brain. And uh, you know, that that's quite, that, that's the book and that's the teacher. So that means the teachers want to put a lot of textbook into the learner's head. That's what he mean, that's about what is learning. And uh, that's also what the learner, uh, what, what a student's draw about learning. That's uh, the, the teachers try to, uh, try to draw a lot or wrote a lot in the break ball. And they say, oh, you need to memorize all the vocabulary or something, all of the key terms. And uh, then here is that because that's, that, that, that's from uh, Chinese characters. Uh, and then I translate that for you. Learning is writing down what the teacher says and don't talk to the classmate. So, so that's a, a kind of cultural issue, right? In, I think in Asia, that's a, a good learning environment is quite uh, a quiet learning environment. But in, I think in the United States, that's, that's maybe totally the opposite, right? Yeah. And that's also, yeah, that's one high school student draw what is learning. And he or she tried to finish all of the textbook. So that's from the left-hand side to the right-hand side. And then he tried to, then finally he done, he tried to finish all of the textbook. And then I think he tried to exercise, uh, try to, to, to finish all of the exercise in the textbook. And then here, that's also quite interesting. That's learning is about some, about test. And uh, that, that's a, a student say, oh, before a test, life is bright. And after a test, life is dark. Because he get, got, a, I think got a low score in some test. And that's also, that's quite common uh, in, I think in Asia learners, they will relate test score to learning. And uh, that's uh, something about exam. And uh, then if we got a very low score and uh, the, your parents will get very angry about your score. And that's also a drawing, try to describe the mood uh, when taking an exam. And uh, that's something like uh, in the beginning, you think uh, you need to calm down and uh, just uh, in normal more, and, uh, and uh, you find that you cannot answer all uh, the, the questions in the test. And then uh, you try to calm down yourself. And then uh, finally, you find that uh, you almost cannot answer all of the questions in the, in the exam. And uh, then when you got the report card and uh, you got the final score and uh, your, your mom got crazy about, yeah. So the uh, rest in peace, yeah, something like that. And also learning is uh, try to practicing. Here that's about mathematics and try to practicing a lot of uh, exercise. And that's again, try to practicing and that's math. That's also, yeah, math. That's a kind of practicing, a lot of exercise. And that's also, because we, we ask the students to draw and also if we cannot really understand why he want to express, 
will have some follow up interviews. And uh, here, the students think that's uh, learning is a kind of uh, increase of your knowledge. And, uh, and also, he, as the time going, then your knowledge will increase. But that's not this like, that's a kind of, sometimes you will, you will uh, experience a kind of bottleneck. So you, you, your knowledge will not increase so directly. Then you have some fret growth, and then finally you will grow again. So, so that's a kind of he want to express. But that's uh, uh, meaning that's uh, the, the uh, learning is a kind of increase of knowledge. And then here, the learning is a kind of uh, growing some trees and you will grow up. Learning is like building a house one by one. So you need to one by one and build up your foundation first, then, then try to build up a house. Learning involves thinking. Learning also involves some hands-on experience. You need to go to the lab or maybe you need to go to outdoor to collect some data or make some observation. And here also, this one is quite interesting. You know, what, what he want to express. Can you understand? Okay, I try to make it quick. Usually I will ask you, you if you want to answer that, yeah. That's because we have some interview. We have a follow-up interview with these students. And he said, that's uh, learning is a kind of, everything will become clear and clear. When you, when you learn more, and in the beginning, from the left-hand side, everything is very, very vague. And the finally, after learning, everything will become clear and clear. So that's a kind of learning is a kind of try to uh, pursue some real understanding of something. You want to clarify something, or you want to know something you or original you don't know or you want to know something unknown. And that's, again, learning is try to solve some of your puzzles, or if you have something you don't understand after learning, then you understand something. Learning is try to create something new, or try to create a better life. You want to miss something you already know, and with something, some new idea, then you want to create a, a better life. So the learning is, kind of try to uh, link to some practice and also link to your life and apply to your life. Then it's a okay, kind of increase uh, your higher order thinking and also increase your knowledge. And then then it's a, a kind of learning something new. So if you see all of their drawing, you will see that they express quite different ideas or concession of learning, even though all of them are, uh, came from Taiwan. They are in the context of Taiwan education, but they express quite diverse idea of concession of learning. Or they express quite different idea about their learning belief. So actually the, uh, the research about concession of learning is not a new idea. So back to the 1979, Sojo, that's, uh, I think that's in the Sweden, the Sweden researchers conduct the first research that's for undergraduate students about their concession of learning. And they found that uh, the students' uh, idea, the range of their concession, their, their concession of learning can range from the increase of knowledge, memorizing, acquisition of facts, procedure uh, that, that, uh, that can utilize in practice, abstraction of meaning, or they try to aim at the understanding of reality. And then later, a lot of researchers try to conduct some follow-up uh, research. And uh, actually, they found out quite similar categories of concession of learning, even across different cultures. Because, uh, for example, Martin, this study is conducted in Hong Kong. And some study that's in Europe, and also maybe a, this one, I think that's from the United States. But you will find that basically, you, you will find that uh, most of them, the, the students will, is, some of them will express uh, learning is a kind of try to memorize something or apply knowledge or understand something. 
or want to see something new or see something in a new way. So you will see, even though there are a lot of research already there, but they express quite common categories across different culture and the different learners. And also, also important, so quite important that you will see that their conception of learning can, can be categorized from very lower level to higher level. Why, why, why I call it, that's a kind of in a hierarchical order. The lower level is something that's learning is kind of try to memorize in something. And then higher level is uh, try to apply knowledge, try to uh, understanding something or try to see something in a new way. That's a more higher level conception of learning. So that's, that, that is a kind of hierarchical uh, hierarchy uh, of conception of learning. So I conduct my studies about conception of learning and the particular in science. Because I say my background is in science education. And I think if I ask you your conception of learning in general, that may be quite different from your conception in learning science. Or if I ask your questions, uh, for example, if you, your conception of learning language may be quite different from your conception of learning mathematics. Or maybe that's quite the same. I don't know. Yeah. So, so because I'm a science education uh, researcher, so I want to particularly address students' conception of learning science. So I conduct an interview, and uh, I interview with 120 Taiwan high school students, and they use a qualitative research method called phenomenographic analysis. And I found out that seven categories of conception of science learning. Science learning as memorizing, science learning as preparing for test, science learning as calculating and practicing tutorial problems, science learning as increase of knowledge, science learning as applying, science learning as understanding, and the science learning as seeing in a new way. And so we found that across the 120 high school students, we found out seven common categories. And that's again, you see that's from a very lower level to higher level. That's a kind of hierarchy. And uh, memorizing is more that lower level. And uh, understanding, seeing in a new way, that's a more high level. And uh, if we want to categorize their response, interview response into only one category for each one. So that's the result. The, the number here is the result. You will find that most of the students they think science learning is a kind of increased knowledge. knowledge. That's the most popular ideas. Then calculating, understanding, that's the second one. Then many of them, still many of them, say science learning is about something about tests or just preparing for tests. And not so much of them think learning science is memorizing. But science, that's focus more on understanding. I think that's that, 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 that's the subject, the nature of the subject. They, they will not rely on a lot on memorizing. And then seeing a new way, that's a very high level. Not so many students, they express that. And then another question is that, do we see any, someone asked some question. Oh. That's Bodong, right? Yeah, okay, yeah. But I, I try to see the me message, okay. And the, in the context, we we'll make a differences. Yeah, because we, we just select some students in high school. We did not try intentionally to select some students from different contexts. Okay, so if the context will play, play a role in their conception of learning. So I conduct another studies. Oh, it done again. So let me try to share. Okay. Oh, Bodong, how about we just finish the talk from here? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just don't worry about the chat. Um, there's some oh, okay. really good questions okay, in the okay, chat. Okay, okay. We can come back later. Okay. Then, so I conduct another study. That's cram school students' conception of learning. 
and the learning science. And the, then to, to everyone here know why it's cream score? That's a kind of, now uh, here they, they don't know, they have no idea about cream score. Cream score, that's a, a kind of uh, after school school. Why is after school? And when you, after your formal school, uh, for example, that's uh, about three o'clock or four o'clock in the United States. And then you go to another, some a kind of uh, extensive training program. Bodong, help me, yeah. Can you explain what's cramp school? Yeah, in, I, 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 I don't know if you know, American researchers know what's cramp school. Oh, right now they, they call a kind of shadow education, something like that, right? Yeah. They, they, they know shadow education? I'm not familiar with this term. Is it kind of oh. after school programs, but it's very focused on training? Instead yes. of extra, yeah, that's, uh, extra that, that, that's Bu Xi Ban. Yeah, I think yeah. that's also popular in China and very popular in Asia. And the, 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 actually the main purpose of cream school is try to increase to help the students test score. That's the only purpose in Asia. Uh, so, so here in Asia also, you, uh, we have GRE cream school, GMAT cream school, and TOEFL cream school. You know, that's just trying to train you to have uh, to to try to enhance your test score in a very short time. You know that that that, that that's the main purpose of cream school. So I just by chance uh know some teachers in cream school and they led me to interview some of the cream school students. And uh the sample in this study they have at least every week they have five days staying in cream school. So they they have a very extensive experience staying in cream school and they have a, got a lot of instruction from cream school. So I used the interview and actually I almost found out the same categories, the seven categories, the same seven categories of conception of science learning. But you can have a guess that do it almost the same but the distribution is quite different. For my previous study, we found that most of the students think that's uh, conceptual learning as increase of knowledge, understanding, or try to make some practice. And uh, for this study, you, you would think the students will go to more lower level conceptual learning or higher level conceptual learning. You can think about that. Then I'll give you the, the answer. You will find that we only interview 45 students. You will find that um, or almost a half of them think concession of learning, concession of science learning as calculating and practicing a lot of problems, uh, tutorial problems. And then 15 of them preparing for tests. Then seven of them say memorizing. And the two of them, that's understanding. But almost no one mentioned about seeing in a new way. No one mentioned nothing about how to apply the knowledge into re real life. Nothing, no one care about that. So that's the evidence that the con contest will play a role in shaping their conception of learning or conception of science learning in this study. So, I go to, so I try to build the cream school, try to shift the students' conception of learning to more shift to more lower level. And then, as I say, I'm a science educator. Then later, I'm an educational technology researcher. So I try to understand if the technology can play a role in shaping their conception of learning. So, that's uh, my paper. I think that's in two. Uh, that's in two o o nine. That's the the paper, the final paper I accept by computer education uh, as a single author by computer education. That's before my appointment of the editor. Yeah. So then later I got so many rejection letters from other editors. You know that that's the most interesting thing that 
before I becoming before I becoming the editor for computer education, I never I never get registration letter from the journal. I think I submit at least ten papers to there. Then from the year of uh the, the year I become the, the, the editor, every year I will receive so many registration letters from the journals. Yeah, so, so that, that you know that that's the how fair of the, the, the journal. Yeah. Okay. Then I I try to interview 83 Taiwanese college students, and they have some way best learning experience. That's a large age in Taiwan, that's quite cutting age. And the not so popular or so common, the college students, they have the experience of online learning experience. So I would say that if the students have more, uh, I, I try to interview them twice. And the first time I asked their concession of learning in general, then the two weeks or three weeks later, I forget. Then I interview them again. What's their concession about web-based learning? Because they have already have some experience of taking some online courses. So is that make a difference? So here is the result. But that, the, I think the font is too small. Actually, you will find that the category is quite similar. Learning is about memorizing. And the status is something about getting a higher status. That's also something about you can get a high score or you can get a better job, or you can get a better position. That's the, the same category. And the calculating and practicing, increase of knowledge, applying, understanding, seeing, and learning, that's also almost the same with my previous studies. But you will see that if that's the main result, if you ask their conception of learning in general, that's a kind of like normal distribution from the lower level to higher level. You find that the most, that's in increase of knowledge. And the some, they are applying and some are calculating and some are understanding. But if you ask them, you interview them, their response about concession of learning, particular in the way best context, you will find out. No one will mention about memorizing. No one will mention about calculating. No one will mention about test score. At least they will mention something about the increase of knowledge, applying, understanding, and seeing in a new way. So you will see here is the evidence that technology can help or can enhance their conception of learning. If we can situate it, or you, if you can properly use some technology to help the instruction, then at the same time, their conception of learning will change or they, they will enhance to, and they, they will shift from the lower level concession to higher level concession. That's the illustration uh, to show the change of their idea. But you know, that's a, that's a kind of a within group, within group design. Well, we interview the same group students and uh, they answer my question twice. So I want to try out my hypothesis that if the technology enhance or the way best learning environment really help their conception of learning. So I conduct another study. That's a quasi experimental study. So we really have a one group of students that's in traditional instruction. And the other group of students, that's they taking online courses. And of course you can imagine that uh, for the, the group, the, the, the students in the online group, they have a more interaction or the, the teacher assign more online task, task, not test, task for them, for them to have more peer interaction or peer collaboration. And also they have a more some inquiry, online searching, inquiry activity in the, the that group. And the, for the traditional interaction group, maybe they have less, much, much, much less that kind of opportunities. Then we have a pretest of their concession of learning and also their post-test of concession of learning. And the basic findings is here. You will find that uh, for the internet assisted interaction group, 
layer score in lower level concession here, memorizing and testing for the after treatment for the lower level concession, their score become lower. So they will not agree with that the learning is a kind of memorizing or testing for the, for the internet assisters in charging group. And for the higher level concession for the internet assisted group compared to the traditional group, their score become higher in the higher level concession. So that's also a, have provide clear evidence that if you use proper technology to help instruction, the students can shift from more lower level concession of learning to more higher level concession of learning. But their lower level concession, their response become lower, their agreement become lower, and their agreement with higher level concession of learning become higher. So, so that's the evidence showing that. I have been saying something quite confused you. Oh, that's quite clear to you, yeah. But, but the basic finding is that if we can properly integrate some technology to enhance learning or enhance your teaching, that's a potential avenue or potential means to foster the student's concession of learning. And that we may possibly shift their concession from more lower level to higher level. That's the main findings across all of the studies I discussed. And how about, I think the teacher's concession is also very important. And that we also have one study about teacher's concession of technology enhanced learning. And for these studies, we focus more on their concession of mobile learning. Well, that's, uh, I think some years ago, the students in Taiwan, uh, some school, especially some laboratory uh, school or experimental uh, school, they have uh, they got uh, a lot of mobile device from the government. So they have a good opportunity to implement the mobile learning uh, almost in all of the class. So, so we, uh, we have the chance to uh, try to, uh, we have uh, connections with all of the, uh, many of the teachers, they implement that kind of mobile learning in, in, in that kind of big, uh, big project, the, the government project. And then we interviewed 15 uh, senior high school teachers from five schools in North Taiwan and also by interview. And we found out that even though they use the same mobile device and maybe the same package provided by the government, and they express quite different concession of mobile learning, uh, mobile learning or mobile teaching. And their concession of mobile learning, that's sixth category. One is meeting students' preferences or conducting classes. Uh, classes with efficiency or integrating and enhancing learning, parting from traditional teaching, focusing on student ownership and extending learning beyond school. Again, you will find that there is a quite diverse concession of mobile learning. And also that's show likely a hierarchy. So if we try to uh, map all of these concessions, into a spectrum, you find that from the left hand side, that's more teacher center, more machine center, and the left uh, right hand side, that's more focus on students' ownership, and then that's more learner center, and they want to empower empowering students, and then the left hand side, that's low, lower level categories, they focus more on the product of learning, and then the more sophisticated or more higher level concession of teaching or learning, they focus more on the process of learning. So you again, you will see that even though they are teachers, they, they have almost the same uh, package or the same device or lesson plan provided by the government or the Ministry of Education. They expect quite different concession of learning and from 
very low level to very high level. So, so that's again, I, that's my, my conclusion. Why is the time right now? Oh, okay, that's my sleeping time. <laughs> okay, so I share my final study. Because I have uh, this series of talk uh, for some university, that's like, like right now in Minnesota. And uh, I think some years ago, that's more than five years ago. And uh, I went to Australia and the one Australia researcher asked me one question, but I don't have any answer about that. He said, when the students growing up, they, re they receive more formal education. What's your expectation or what's your guess? Their concession of learning. The, will our education help their concession learning or foster their concession learning from lower level to high level or maybe the opposite we may be uh, maybe in the beginning they have very good or may higher level concession learning then they they change to lower level concession learning but at that moment I don't have any answer about that. So I conduct another study. I try to collect the data from grade two, four, six, eight, 10, and 12, because that's caused so many grades. So the only way I can do is use, again, my first study drawing. But all of the learners across all of the grade, they can draw their idea about, uh, about learning. And I, we try to code their, their drawing, their expression in, in the drawing. And the first, I want to show that how technology may play a role in students' conversation. Well, we ask them to draw their idea about learning in general. We did not say you need to draw something about technology. So I would say that maybe less than 10% of them they draw something about technology, even though at that time, Taiwan are so focusing on try to use different technology to enhance any subjects in the school. And the, then if they draw something about technology, what did they draw? So they, I, I, draw, I, I want to share the finding about technology first for you. That's uh, one high school students, that's 12th grade and the draw some year computer. But he said that computer is one source of learning because also you can go outside and also can learn from the teacher. And the ebook, and the, you will see that's a mobile phone here. He can search something. And also computer, also technology also play a role, but that's also one source of learning. But learning can, come from different sources. And also, yeah, you can use mobile device, try to Google some Wikipedia. And here, that's also mobile device, but you will see a lot of HTC, you cannot, you cannot remember the brand name, you know, no one already, not everyone already forgot that, you know, but you know, that's HTC donate a lot mobile device to Ministry of Education, in Taiwan. So that's the reason I, I say we have a big project about mobile and that's the, the, the major reason. And then that's actually here, uh, the mobile device is not the rate related to learning. He just play music and that's just a, a kind of a, a company that's just uh, with you to learn. And then that's, that's a few, I think that's less than 10% 10, 10 of the students, they draw something about them, about technology. Then finally, I would like, I would like to conclude uh, my talk. I ask you to go through with me, go with me and find the, actually finally, uh, we published another paper. Then we have the data from kindergarten to high schools students. And then I randomly pick up their drawing, two or three sample for you. 
and the youth from the kindergarten to high school students. And I will not give you uh, any, any, uh, any um, firm findings about that. I just ask you to, to observe all of the drawing and then let me give me your observation, what you observe, the, the trend when they go up. Because I need to answer the questions uh, raised by the Australian researchers. He said, from the very early childhood, when they grow up, why they change? Did they change their conception of learning? But I need to say, we did not conduct longitudinal studies. That's cost sessional because, because we, we, we did not have time to have that kind of long-term observation. But let's still give you some hint about the, how they develop their conception of learning. Here, the kindergarten, why is learning? Dancing, kindergarten, second grade, second grade, fourth grade, playing some basketball or yeah, teacher lecture. Fourth grade, sixth grade. That's English. Sixth grade, eighth grade, eighth grade, tenth grade. Ten grade, I think you saw this one. Twelve grade. Twelve grade. Okay. What's your observation? But but you know, I before I know your answer, I share this PowerPoint to to some researchers in other countries, for example, in Japan, in Korea, and also in Europe, and in Thailand. And uh, you know, they say that if they conduct the same study, they will find maybe the same trend, trend the, 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 same, the same trend of their development of transitional learning. So do anyone want to share your idea uh, of Dr. your Chai observation? Did. Yes. Yeah, uh, I, I think, um, do you think we can open up uh, from this coin, you know, just, you know, as inviting people to share their observation and, and also start to do q and I just yes. find the drawings fascinating myself. Um, yeah. So but, anyone uh, want to share? Yes. Feel free to jump in. Unmute yourself and, 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 and share your observations. I'll, I'll jump in very, very quickly. This talk has been absolutely fascinating and seeing that, that, that trend was, you know, it's really striking. And I'm thinking of the drawing of the, of the child who was um, a, a, a learning to draw, right? I think it was maybe the second grader or the third grader. And it was just so like absorbing. It was clear that the child was like in the frame and the materials and the tools were in front of them. And as it gets further, you know, suddenly you see classrooms and rows and, uh, and teachers are quite large. And yes. uh, there's something just very uh, like powerful that, that, that jumps out in these drawings. Uh, so I know that's not sort of like a crystal clear thought, but it's sort of an emotional reaction. It's quite powerful. Yeah, actually, we we uh we analyze their emotion expressed uh, in the drawing, and then the the basic trend is that they found positive to negative when they grow up. Yeah, that that's one major findings. Yeah, but that's I, as you can see, that's quite clear. Yeah, and then 
Any other observation? Yeah. What's the time right now? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's perfect. Uh, perfect moment yeah, to start yeah. Q&A. Yeah, I, I think. Yeah, I think I, I can conclude something. Yeah. Okay. Actually, sure. We found, for, we can we found out that that that's uh when they go up, the learning is more mm -hmm. narrow, and the, for for right. example, the 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 people involved is more narrow, and then for in the beginning they have some their peers, their family members involved, and finally the only some students or, or maybe only teacher or maybe only self, you know, learning is more alone and alone when they go up. And then the definition of learning become narrow and narrow. So, so that's the main findings. And the, the, actually the context of learning is also become narrow than when they go up. When, when they uh, was very young, outdoors, informal context, that's all something about it. They, they, they are something related to, to learning. So here, oh, it, I, excuse I me, a, Dr. Sai. Yes. Could I, could I make uh, one comment? Uh, yes, my name is Bill Bart. And one of the topics I study is, is chess, the game of chess. And a major issue in learning chess is um, initially you have to learn certain things and memorize and so on. But as you exceed to higher levels of the game, uh, the key thing is understanding. Mm -hmm. uh, elite trainers in chess constantly talk about how people are learning chess, they just memorize, memorize, and it really doesn't, they don't really gain that much, but they mm -hmm. have to begin to understand these basic yeah. ideas. And that's, uh, uh, and the other thing is that, uh, uh, approaching something in a new way, that's at the highest level of chess. Yes. Where you become yeah. creative, you begin to formulate new plans that hadn't been considered. So uh, regarding the game of chess, what you found is, is actually quite similar, but uh, at yeah. the highest point in a sense is, or the major top point is understanding. That distinguishes yeah. people who are just at lower levels from those who are at higher levels. Yes, yes, I agree with you. Yeah, and uh, I, I also have some some final slides. Uh, maybe uh, I said you, you can try to uh, investigate uh, if you use different technology. Maybe that ship that will shift the students' conception of learning in different ways. And also, I would I would say because we right now we rely on a lot on technology. For example, right now we use technology to deliver that this, this seminar. So. The, the contextual impact on the conception of learning science or conception of technology as learning, such as COVID-19. Yeah, so right now we also conduct uh, one study. We, we, we ask the students to draw their conception of technology as learning. And that maybe they, 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 and the, if we can have some data that before COVID-19 and the after COVID-19, maybe that, 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 that express a huge differences. So I think that's also a, a potential research issues for researchers. And uh, then also, I think a major issue is uh, how can we can use different ways, try to foster or try to enhance students' conception of learning. And the, the, that, I think that's the major issues for, for, for researcher, educational researchers. They, they need to think more about that. And then if our formal scoring, we, 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 we did not help, they, to shift a better conception of learning. And that we, we quite often did the opposite. I think that's not a good thing for educators. You know, that, that's what I want, want, to, want to say at the end of this talk. And that's my, my Instagram <laughs> and also YouTube. I have my Instagram and YouTube, yeah. And also you can visit my, my website, yeah. Okay, that's, right. I think that's about the time, right? We can yes. take one or two more questions, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Thank you so much, Dr. Chai, for such an inspiring talk. And you were humble in the beginning. You don't, you say you don't have a lot to say about learning informatics, but I see all but kinds of But that's nothing about learning informatics. Yeah, you know, you're just, opening up a, a very 
unique and important area, I think, for learning informatics, which is to think about conceptions of learning in, in today's informational world that you know, learning informatics cares a lot about. So I'm fascinated by the talk and I see a, a number of colleagues posting questions already in the chat. Oh, really? uh, yeah, uh, but I want to invite them in case they want to talk directly, you know, ask the questions to you because there are a few questions. Um, I don't know whether um, Happy uh, Warfa is still here. Let me see. Uh, maybe um, he had to jump off. Um, and you know, for, for the moment, I want to invite the audience right now who are still here. If you have any questions, just you know, unmute yourself and and ask your question. Oh uh, yeah, one one ask uh, what kind of web based uh, activity did the student do? Uh, that's that, that's why I say that they, they, the 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 teachers in the web based group try to assign more learning tasks for peer interaction and peer collaboration for some something like CSCL uh, activity. And uh, also they have more online inquiry project for them. I think that's the major difference. Because if they, you, do, uh, you, you do something about technology or you use some online resources, that's quite easy for you to define that kind of activities. But if they just sitting in the traditional classroom setting, and the most of, most of the uh, time, the teachers will spend the time in in lecturing. That's that like why I'm saying yeah right what I'm doing right now. And the, any new message? Oh, that's my website. Yeah, uh, English website. Yeah. And the, any other questions? I do have one quick question. Yes. Um, I really like the connection made between the conceptions of learning and learning outcomes. And I know that, that you included that in the future directions. I wonder uh, what, what is the existing evidence in this context? Is there a strong relation? And yes. is, it, is it developmentally changing? Or is it something that continues to exist across time? Yes, yes. Uh, I think you, you raise a very good question. Yeah. Actually, we have one, one paper that's published in Learning and Instruction. And then we, uh, we asked the students uh, to uh, do some peer assessment, online peer assessment activity. And actually, we have uh, interviewed their concession uh, about online peer assessment and uh, learning by online peer assessment. And then we, because we have a print form, so we can uh, also can have their process data and then how they comment or they, they revise their, their uh, that's a kind of writing project. They, they revise their, their writing based on peers' comments. And then we have the final score for their writing because we as experts try to rate their writing. And uh, you, you know, quite interesting that we think that uh, the, the, your learning belief will guide your process then your process then will, then will influence your learning outcome. But when we run the statistical analysis, we found out that your concession of learning have more prediction power than your process, learning process in predicting your final outcomes. So that's, you can see the powerful in, uh, role prayed by the your concession of learning. That's that's have more prediction power than your process data in predicting your learning outcomes. So so and then I think so we, we see a lot of study there are strong linkage and also uh learning uh concession of learning is a very strong predictor for students confidence of learning interest of learning and their attitude for learning and then finally that, that that will also contribute to the success of their learning i think that's that's quite clear about that yeah so we have also a series of study about that yeah thank you thank you dr yeah. tai um and i think just because of time we need to wrap up uh but i i, I, I need to see yeah. and i i, I <laughs> yes. need to get my you know i i I, I I will get my second dose of vaccine tomorrow morning, you know? <laughs> yeah. Great. 
Congratulations on that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So uh, I see. Um, yeah, like, thank you. Thank you again for giving this talk. It's, it's really inspiring. And thank you, everyone, for joining us. Uh, yeah, really, it's, I, I would say that's, that's my honor to be here, even that's midnight. And even Bordeaux <laughs> is not so good to me. Yeah, but I'm so happy to be here. Yeah, to stay so, so late. Yeah, for everyone. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. So, so you want to you want to finish that? Yeah. That's already finished. Yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. Yes. Yeah. I think uh, colleagues are leaving and. Um, okay. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, I, so, I, I, yeah, we are trying to arrange to meet each other face to face. Yeah. Hope yes. to be soon. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Okay. All right. Take care, everyone. Okay. Thanks Thank for everyone.